snowing. Look at our beautiful weather here in March in New York. It's snowing. And it's time for another tag. And this is the advice tag. Yay! So I'm tagging all of you to give some life-changing advice to everyone. My life-changing advice to you is never, ever, ever feel sorry for yourself. No matter what. If your situation is lousy, change it. If you can't do anything about it, you know, then pray. Um, I'll give you a couple examples. Um, I remember years ago, um, I had some cash in my day. I don't have money anymore. <laughs> but I had lost a lot of money in the stock market. And I was selling my big, beautiful home to move into my original home, which was rented out a few times and needless to say um because of the renters and we always kept the house up but because of the renters they do their renter thing sometimes and so now i was moving back people that knew me said i can't believe you're doing this they thought i was you know kidding i said no i'm i, I can't afford to live in this big house i'm moving and and uh of course you know that's always a fun time because you know people love you when you have cash when you don't <laughs> say it or buddy but I don't care, because you know why? You can't feel sorry for yourself. But while I was doing that, I heard a radio show by Keith Moore that said, never, never, ever feel sorry for yourself. And it just, like, triggered in my brain. It's like, that is so right. And, I mean, I used to feel sorry for myself all the time. Like, oh, my, uh, you know, I don't have this, or I can't do this, or, you know, this is wrong, or that's wrong. And I just learned you can't be that way. You have to be positive. And you got to, you know, like I said, if I went through a time because of all the changes where... I used to be able to go out and shop every week, spend two, three, four hundred dollars on clothes, just on me. You know, now I didn't have any money. Ten dollars seemed like a million dollars. So I changed things up. I mean, I learned that, hey, thrift stores, they're great. You know, uh, and couponing and all that other stuff. So, and you know what I found? I'm just as happy. In fact, I'm happier now, not having all that responsibility. I'm a much better person. Not working all the time has been better for me. The stress levels have been down to zilch. And, you know, I could have sat there and felt sorry for myself about things. And it could be anything. Maybe you're sick. I used to, I got so sick one time. It was horrible. It was a miracle. I probably didn't die. You know what I mean? I'm talking about for a season of time. Because um, I was under so much stress. And, um... I remember um, the ambulance came one time because I felt like I was going to have a heart attack. And, I mean, it's embarrassing, but it's true, you know, because, I mean, I kept having these really bad chest pains and stuff. I mean, really bad. I mean, it was like, I'm going to die kind of pains. And um, the, the ambulance people said, man, stress can't kill you. But, you know, I went to my doctor and I thought I had the flu. And he said, man, sister, you are under so much stress. I mean, it was unbelievable. But, you know... I guess I'm sharing that to say I've been through stuff. I'm not just saying this because I'm, you know, oh, don't feel sorry for yourself. I'm saying your health could be down. Your finance could, finances could be down. You know, you can either change it or pray and ask God to change it for you. And like, like I said, when I went through the financial stuff, I actually enjoyed couponing and buying all my stuff or, or getting all my stuff for free at, you know, clothing and makeup and everything. And... You know, you just got to do what you got to do to survive, especially, um, I went through a divorce, you know, I had at one time, I think it was like 205, 207, I had 10 major things that happened, and usually they act like if you have that many major things, just about you die, I mean, I was so nervous, I was shaking all the time, my doc, I was going to the doctor literally every other day, because I was under so much stress, um, you know, my ex-husband was abusive physically unfaithful the whole nine yards I mean he, gave, he had given me trouble for years and I don't want to go touch on that but I went through a divorce during that time my dad died I had a big business and I I dumped that business because basically that business wasn't going to do it for me there was a lot of bullying going on so I just felt like you know what um this isn't for me and I got out of that and uh I mean, then I got a regular job, you know, because I used to um, have my own business, but I was like uh, in direct marketing and I was like a big direct marketing girl. So I got out of that. And I mean, it's just one thing after another thing. And uh, I mean, I just worked all the time because my marriage was bad. And uh, my son and I, I used to say I'm single, married, meaning that my husband at that time, not Clay, because Clay's wonderful, but he was just, 
you know, was just not there at all. I mean, he just like checked out and had a bunch of problems and issues and, and, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, um, he even ended up going to jail, you know, later on, not because of me, but the new wife, you know, just to be quite honest with you, he had lots and lots of problems. But anyway, my son and I, thank God, God was protected us and we didn't, weren't a part of any of his mess, but we were both happy to, when, um, we got out of there and we met Clay and things just changed up. You know, I filed for divorce and I, then I met Clay um, after I filed for divorce and, and Clay had his wife and him had been split for 10 years, but, um, I'm sharing that just so you can see this, this, you know, I had reason to so feel so, so sorry for myself, but I said, I'm not doing that. I heard that, you know, it was like 205. I heard that. And after that, it was like the shit hit the fan, <laughs> fan, so to speak. I mean, the first thing, like I said, was I was, I was moving out into that other house, that little 205 house and then my daddy died and my dad and I were so close I mean I had a really hard time with that in fact I didn't really feel a big piece in my heart until Clay and I after Clay and I met because I just needed an anchor I mean I had God but for some reason I just needed that covering you know there was like one thing after another thing after another thing I mean just a lot of things happened and um just a hard time for me and so I mean, like I said, there was at least 10 things and my health was getting worse and worse and worse because I was under so much stress. But I share all that not because I want you to feel like, oh, poor Ruthie, poor Ruthie. But you know what? You cannot feel sorry for yourself. Life happens. You pick up yourself by your bootstraps. You pray and ask God for help. And you say, you know, I'm not going to allow myself. And you just got to do what you got to do. And the first thing is, and I guess I share this, is Joyce Meyer says this. You can't sit there and go, um... You have a bad day today, then the next day, then the next day, then the next day. Then after about four weeks of that, you're sink, sinking so low, you can't even lift yourself up. So the minute you see yourself going, oh, I'm so sorry, just say, I'm not doing this. I am not doing this. If you have problems, grab your Bible and go in the bedroom and pray or the bathroom or whatever. You know, um, my sister Zeddy taught me something too. She, you know, sometimes I just close my eyes and say, God, take care of it and forget it. <laughs> I know it sounds horrible, but, you know, but I mean, that's because I'm a Christian. You know, everybody's got to... You know, I guess everybody, I mean, I don't know, to me it's easy, you know, I mean, meaning it's easy. It's like, I can't imagine life not being a Christian because I could never make it on my own. You know, that's me. But the thing about it is, is don't ever, 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 ever feel sorry for yourself. Like I said, when I started having to wear secondhand clothes all the time, I just made a new fashion. I was wearing vintage. And I just had a smile on my face when I was going through the divorce. Actually, when I went through the divorce, it was probably the happiest time of my life because I was so happy because I thought I'd be depressed getting rid of them. In fact, I felt so joyful. It was like I felt someone freed me from prison, and I know my son was happy too. But it was like, um, I guess I'll say that to say... Uh, uh, you know, if you go through stuff, I used to make jokes like, yeah, my ex Rex. I mean, I didn't, you know, like now I told my son, I told my, you know, ex-husband, I forgive you completely. You know, I'm not going to sit there and be bitter for the next 50 years over something he did. You think he cares? No, we don't care. They don't care. <laughs> you know, the better thing is just to go on with your life and enjoy every day. Like Clay and I call it the History Channel. We don't talk about things that happened a long time ago. It's like, eh, that was then, this is now. You know, you're going to... Like Lot's wife, she turned around and looked at the, looked at her past, so to speak, and a pillar of salt buried her alive, so to speak. So, you know, they said that, what was that, maybe a meteorite shower or something hit her and it buried her alive. Just turning around looking at her past. You look backwards all the time, you're going to have all kinds of trouble. If I sat and meditated on all those things, like, oh, this happened and that happened, oh, I've been an abused wife. Well, yeah, if somebody comes up to it, I'll, I, you know, I'll talk to them about it, give them some, you know, some strength, but I wouldn't, uh... I'm not going to sit and live that way now. I'm not a victim anymore. And even then, I mean, not that I'm not saying it was smart that I stayed there. I just, I was under stress. I didn't know how to handle it. It was emotional, too. There was a lot of things, you know, eh, you know, I don't want to talk all about that, but there's reasons that people do stupid stuff, you know. But anyway, I guess I share all that to say, today, every day, my advice never feel sorry for yourself. Now, you guys are all tagged. I gave you some really good advice. Now, you give me some good advice. I tagged you all. I hope that if you have some really good advice, just like Keith Moore gave that advice, man, he changed my life. Thank you, Keith Moore, wherever you are. You are an awesome man. But anyway, he's a, he's a minister. He's a, like a radio guy. But if you have some good advice, man, share it on out. Because I tell you, you might change someone's life, just like Keith Moore 
changed my life by, you know, saying never, never, ever feel sorry for yourself because I was only moving out of that house at the time. I still had marriage trouble and stuff, but he straightened out for a little bit there, so I wasn't having marriage trouble at the moment when I was moving into that house. I mean, he still had his problems, but not as bad as normal. But what I'm saying is I didn't know the other stuff that was about to hit. And, oh, even during that time, you guys, I love this. Even during that time, oh, no, no, that happened right before that. I'm sorry, but I also have to add this anyway because it's too funny. I had rabies shot, too. Rabies. <laughs> rabies shots. <laughs> My whole family <laughs> rabies shots because <laughs> they got bit by a bat when I was sleeping. But that happened, like I said, well, that happened during the time when we were selling the house to, to move out and stuff. I got uh, a bat bit me and I, and, uh, and my whole family, because there were bats in our house coming through the chimney. So we all had their rabies shots. But the reason I laugh and say that is, I mean, that was like the beginning of all the trouble. So, like I said, if anyone has a right to feel sorry for themselves, I think I have a little bit. But I ain't going to do it because I ain't no fool. So, anyway, I, you know, I just, my life is all bright and beautiful and coming up. So why would I want to look back at all that yucky, yucky stuff? So I want to look at happy, good stuff, because my life is wonderful and beautiful, and if something goes wrong, I could make it better. You know, me and praying with God's help, <laughs> you know, it's all good from here on in. <laughs> so anyway, guys, like, subscribe. I hope that it helps you, and like I said, give me some good advice, like Keith Moore did, and give other people some good advice, so you're all tagged, and I'm sure you all have at least one little thing, even if it's take a bath in the morning or brush your teeth, you might help someone. Okay, guys, like, subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.